by the time the doctor had arrived, the fit, I, I can't, I don't know how long it lasted, but then everything just suddenly stopped. And that's when things got really strange because it was like, literally as, as this kind of this kind of explosion if you like and then suddenly of stillness but it was like I'd woken up in a completely different world it was like it's very difficult to put into words um, the way I can describe it is like someone put the uh, turned on the colors of reality really like technicolor um, and this feeling of absolute ecstasy it's, and, 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 and oneness really is the only way I can put it into words. When I was 25, I went to a Vipassana retreat in, um, in Australia, I was traveling and uh, on that retreat, and I'd never, I mean, I shouldn't have done it. I'd never done meditation before, but it was classic me. I thought, right, I'm gonna just jump in there, leap in there, 10 days silent, 16 hours meditation a day. Um, and by the fourth or fifth day, I was, all these symptoms, everything had come back to the surface. And it, it was, and I tried to talk to people there, but I don't think they had the un, uh, the understanding or the, the ability, because they just said, go back to the meditation. I, we were up in the mountains, in, in um, the Blue Mountains, just outside Sydney. And all I wanted to do, I kept running out the meditation uh, hall and just throwing myself on the ground. And then it brought all my symptoms back again and I had another two, three year period. In a way it was worse because this time, because I knew I'd come out of it before, I just couldn't find a way. And that's when I discovered shamanism and, uh, and uh, it spoke to me. And it was, it was the, the knowledge that there was this concept of this shamanic sickness. And there was this one moment when I consciously, I was having a fit and I realized that this was a, Instead of trying to shut it down, instead of trying to um, just hang on for dear life, which is what I would be doing normally, I, uh, I realised that that was a gateway, that this was a gateway to another uh, level of a consciousness. And I used all my training, all that I'd learned shamanically to go, th to step through that doorway consciously. And, um, and, ex and I re-experienced that ecstatic experience that I'd had spontaneously at the age of 14. I mean, this was in my late 20s, early 30s. So it taken sort of about 17 years, really, of kind of on and off mental illness, things, discovering things that helped and things that got a lot worse and then getting on this path of shamanism. And then, and then from that day on, that was the last of those fits I had. If I look at most of my journey, it's been learning the art of surrender. Yeah, how to surrender to, 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 to grace, to, to, to healing, to power. To realize that there's, that there, there's a, a sense of, um, there is heal, there's always healing available. And the, the way I see it, in the, vis, in the invisible world, there are spirits, there are invisible forces that want us to be well. And it's, it, when we get in our own way, that's when the, the problems, we encounter problems. So, so I suppose trying to get out of my own way and just surrender to the experience. That I, can, I can sense the edges of a fit. The last couple of years have been incredibly uh, stressful. My wife got diagnosed with stage four cancer like two years ago. So obviously that's been um, a journey in itself, an intense journey. And uh, without the shamanic... Um, uh, without that support, without that sense of that invisible support, both for her, because she's on this path as well, and, and for me, we wouldn't have been able to survive.